Thank you so much for joining us on a brand new episode of 420 Grams. And uh, today we, you know, we bring something special to you. Generally, when you you watch our show, um, you see there are four or five of us who have nothing better to do in life. And uh, we come and we chat and, you know, we talk Indian football. But we today, the talking is not going to be done by us. Today, the talking is going to be done by someone who knows Indian football pretty well. Um, he's been part of an FC Goa team that saw its most successful season or seasons in the time when he was there. Um, they reached the final of the ISL, they won the Super Cup, they won the league, thereby went into Asia after that. And it's very rare uh, in football, uh, Indian or Europe or wherever, that if you retire within two years or you stop playing for a team within two years, you come back um, as the manager. Uh, because that is the story of FC Goa's new manager. His name is Carlos Peña, who last played for FC Goa just two years back. Just two years back. And if you look at him right now, he looks like he could get on the field again. Um, to start playing for the team. Uh, Carlos, thank you so much for joining us on the show. My name is Arjun. Um, my bearded friend's name is Siddhant. And uh, thank you so much for taking our time and joining us. I just want to understand, was it an easy decision? Uh, because, you know, generally when they say a player retires, stops playing, because uh, when you're playing professional, it's not the same when we start off as kids. You know, there's love and there's everything. There's a lot more that's added on to it. So it's a heavy affair. Um, so sometimes you want to break from it. You don't want to get back into it. Was it easy for you saying, no, I just quickly want to get back to the field? Uh, well, my decision about retiring was, uh, I was uh, thinking about that sometimes now because uh, I had in my mind that after I stopped playing football, I wanted to be to become a coach no? because I, I, I had this passion, these, these thoughts during my career. I was... Uh, always interested in, in the game, in the uh, in the dressing room, how to manage the, the players, how how my coaches organize the, the training sessions, how they plan the game. So I, I was in the last uh, years of my career mostly. I was interested in in that new role in in football. No, so uh, this were this was sorry one of the. Uh, one of the biggest part that uh, made me to take that decision, no, because okay. I felt that my time as a player has finished. I I didn't feel I didn't feel that passion to to keep on to keep on playing. So I was to I wanted to to be in the other part in the other role, no. So for me it was easy. Fam family didn't say please stay. You've been away for too long. You've been playing all over the world. Stay. Take some time off. Yeah, but when your mind is not uh, thinking in that, when your mind is thinking in, in other thing, it's difficult to be in the in the same role. No, so I was very happy. Also playing. Uh, sometimes I miss that part because the life of being a player for me is the the best one, mm -hmm. no doubt about about this. But I felt this passion. Uh, to, to become in, in a new role, no? And well, my family is used to live in that way, to live yeah. in different different places, different countries. Uh, so I, I love this part. Uh, Carlos, I wanted to ask you a little bit about <clears throat> your your playing career, just to just to get a little bit warmed up uh, into, into this uh, episode of the show as well. Uh, you've had, of course, experience uh, uh, playing in the Segunda as well as in the in the high, highest levels of European football, uh, how does that translate when it when you come to a country like India? Uh, first, as a player, how how did that kind of help you uh, figure out the system here, uh, gel with the other players in the squad? I know you're someone who takes team building and and that kind of team spirit very seriously. And now, how do you hope that will also then now translate into your uh, role as a coach? Well, I have been playing in Spain during all my career in the highest level, no? in second division or in La Liga. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been playing there with a lot of demanding, with a lot of pressure every time you go into the pitch, you know. And when I, I, I had never the chance to play, to play outside from Spain, to play abroad. And when I received the offer to, to India, it was a, a great chance for me, no, because... Uh, I was 34 years old at that moment. I, it was for me a perfect moment to, to to test, to check different things, to try different things, to to play in a different country, 
to carry my family also to, to know a different culture. I was very lucky that my children uh, live in India during two years. They knew a different culture. So for me, it was a, a perfect moment. No, uh, I think I arrived in a, in a great moment because when you are 34 years old and you have lived many things, you are more ready uh, to, to face sometimes some frustration no? because I think that football in India is really different to football in Europe. As I said to you before, the demanding in Europe is, 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 very, is very strong, it's big, it's, it's crazy during every day. And in India, I, I, I have to recognize that this, uh, the pressure is, is, low, is less and, and the football is different. The football is different. You, you know different mates, different teammates, you play in different way, and it was very, very interesting for me. Carlos, what, what was that uh, first impression like uh, when you landed up in Goa as a player? Um, did Because I'm sure you came in with some expectations. It's human of us. We're going somewhere. We have certain amount of expectations. I mean, you still don't know where you're going. Um, when you eventually land up there, and I'm not just talking about the field. I'm talking about life in India. Um, life in India is very different. Geographically, it's much closer to Spain because you were in Goa. Um, but beyond that, uh, what was it like? The transition? Did it take you time to transition into it? Well, I don't need uh, too much transition. No, I have uh, talked with Koro before coming, with Edubedia. I had some people that I knew before coming and they give uh, they gave me a lot of information. So I knew what... Uh, I was uh, uh, facing, you know, and for me, it was not, it, it was very easy. It was very easy. In terms of football, as I say to you, uh, well, you, you you arrive to a football that mostly Indian players, no, uh, they need to, to progress. They are, there is a, a little difference between the foreign players and the Indian players. And you as a foreign player, you need to, um, to act sometimes like a teacher, you know, because they they look at you as a role model. They look at you as a, a great influence and you have to take advantage of it, no? And for me, it was an amazing experience, no? Because Indian players, mostly the young players, try to listen to you every time, try, try to, to, to follow your example. And for me, it was a, a great experience, no? I, I was just saying, so, so you're, uh, sorry, you're, you're 38. Um, yeah. I'm 39. Uh, the man in the middle of our screen is 74. He doesn't look like it. <laughs> but I'm just trying to say, because at the age of 39, Carlos, I still feel like I'm a kid. Um, at least my wife still calls me a kid. Um, I have mannerisms of a kid. I I'm trying to get into the psyche of a coach because you're the guy, if your shoulders are down, your team's shoulders are down, right? At a very young age of 38, um, mentally, is that something, is it a coach, you just grow into it. You just have to get into it. You can never be prepared for what's going to happen. But then you grow into it. And once you sort of start swimming out of it, you become stronger and stronger. Is that the way it is? It's not the same 38 years old for one person that for another person, you know. I think it depends. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. it depends many times about how you live your experience. How have you lived your, your life, you know. And for me, I have been living under pressure during my last 20 years, you know, I'm, I'm really used to live under pressure. As a football player, uh, when you go into the pitch, you are playing in front of 20,000 people, you're under pressure every time, you know? And well, for me, 38, uh, 39 years old, I consider myself an, exper an experimented person right now because I have lived uh, many things I have lived in different environments in different Experience, countries yeah, I have played yeah. in different teams so I have lived a lot of a lot of experience you know and uh, I think it's important also the experience and the energy you have yeah. because maybe when you are 65 years old okay you have a lot of experience you are but you don't have the same energy the same passion and the same uh, illusion, not that I, I feel now. So I, I don't consider myself a non-experienced guy. <laughs> Perfect. What are you looking forward to most, Carlos, in, in your role as head coach of FC Goa? 
uh, it's a club set up that you obviously know pretty well. Uh, you know the people there, you know the management there. I think uh, you have a good sense of the kind of football uh, the people of Goa, the fans want to see as well. Uh, so what are you looking forward to most to when you come back in, in this role as head coach? Well, first of all, when you arrive to a new place, you have to analyze what things happened in the last time, you know? We are now trying to analyze what happened the, the last season, uh, um, how the players perform, how the players are feeling now about the last season, about the new, the new season. So now we are trying to, to, to plan, to organize the squad, to organize the technical staff, the people in the club, to, uh, to create a, a great family. You know? For me, this is the most important. We, we need to, uh, to work as a family inside the pits, outside the pits, everyone into the club has to go in the same path, in the same way. And I think this is the, the most important now. Yeah. So just, just to follow up on that, uh, any specifics you can share with us? Because obviously you've already started the work, the process of building towards uh, the season that is coming up. So in your assessment and your team's assessment of things, what did the club do well last season and what, what do you need to improve on? Well, uh, we have to think a lot in what happened the last season, no? because obviously it's not normal that it's not usual that FC yeah. Goa finish in the ninth position in the in the league, you know. And we know that they they did they made a many a lot of good things. They had some issues also. So you have to analyze all of these things. Now it's not time to think that everything was a disaster, but of course we can think that everyone everything uh, was good because. It's not good for FC Goa to finish in the ninth position. And this club uh, uh, has had always a winning mentality, uh, has always fight for the, uh, uh, the first, uh, first uh, position in the league. So it's time to, to analyze, to, to realize what happened and to prepare for the, for the new season. Carlos, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting into a very uh, philosophical zone. Um, and by, by that, I mean that, um, you know, for a league, which is pretty young right now, um, all the teams are very young. You've played abroad, so they've been around for 50 years, 60 years. This league is just finding its steps. They've just started learning how to walk. Uh, so for a new team, say like FC Goa, um, so that, you know, you, you grab on to people outside of Goa as well. You, you know, they, they make you their neutral team if they have to. What's more important for you? Winning titles? or having a specific style of play? Because sometimes the two don't match. Sometimes, you know, you sort of have to say, okay, if I want to win, I have to let go of how I want to play. How, how do you look at that? Winning titles with your own identity. I think this is the most important, you know? I, I, I feel that, uh, or I, I, I'm sure that the way you go for the things, the way you achieve your objectives, is very important. It's very important. It matters how you achieve your goals. It, mm -hmm. it, it matters a lot how you go for your objectives, you know? And we know perfectly how FC Goa fans want their team, want, they like their team plays, you know? And this is very important because uh, football is about entertaining. Football is about... Uh, making fun the people, make them happy. And we will try to do this, you know. Okay, the titles are very important, of course. We are thinking, we are talking about professional football and we can't lie to the people because we are, trophies are very important. But for me, the most important is that the fans, when they go to the stadium and they finish, finish the, the 90 minutes of the game, they go to their home proud, and they have enjoyed a lot uh, watching play their team. Carl just, just one more thing, sorry. Carlos, you, you have two boys here talking to you um, who are Arsenal fans. Um, and they, they've been Arsenal fans since Arsene Wenger. So Arsene Wenger is the main reason. And uh, so we're used to heartbreak as well because post he left, um, heartbreak continued. Um, but the fact is that there's a certain brand of football. Arsene Wenger sort of exemplified that. 
uh, trophies is fine, but you play your style. You play your style. Um, in that sense, what would be Goa style? If you could tell me, um, what is their style of play? Is there a certain style of play, or are we just assuming that Goa likes playing possession-based football, having control of the ball, having control of the game, and thereby going ahead and doing what they do? Well, I don't believe only in controlling the ball. Controlling the ball for what? For create chances to score goals. Okay, for me, this is the most important about the possession. Uh, what I feel about FC Goa style is that uh, they like proactive teams. They like teams that go for mm. the games, that face uh, uh, any game that you play in the same way. Okay, when you uh, turn on the, the TV and you are watching FC Goa team, okay, this, this team is going to, to go to, to score goals, to attack, to try to... Okay, to uh, attack with the possession of the ball, of course, you uh, you can uh, have a different styles. No, you can uh, wait into your own half. You can wait for the opponent, and then you can counterattack, trying to be reactive. What I want to say when I'm talking about a proactive team is a team that go for the games, that try to keep the ball as fast as possible try to attack with many players, try to put many players into the into the box, try to create many chances. This is the team I want. In, in terms of the Indian players, Carlos, I just, just wanted to ask you, so um, how, how, how does that equation work? Because I, I remember when I was chatting with Juan Ferrando, when he was um, part of the FC Goa team, um, and I asked him the same thing. I said, you've got a couple of uh, high-performing foreign players who played at a different level, uh, different levels of expectations. They come in, and then you're, you know, you're bracketed with the Indian player, who's probably not played at that expectation. I'm not saying he's not as good, but he's probably never experienced that level, so he doesn't know if he can do that much or not. How do you sort of make sure? Because as you, as the head coach, you got to make sure everyone is an equal for you, right? Even though there are three, four players who, if they click for you, they can make you win the game, or you know, they can sort of make you cross the finish line. In that sense, how do you maintain cohesion? I've always wondered, because if you've had four or five foreigners in a team, how do you maintain cohesion in the team with that Indian player and making the Indian player feel important and the Indian player being an important aspect into the team going and winning? Well, first of all, I don't like to make difference between foreign players and Indian players because they are part of the same team. You know, of course, that you try to sign foreign players to, to have a big influence into the team, into the rest of the players. And as I said before, they need to be good examples and good leaders for the rest of the players because of their experience, because they have played in different countries, because they have played in, in high levels, you know. But for me, the, we need the Indian players also to make that this difference. When I was playing in FC Go as a player, for me, Brandon uh, was not, uh, he was not worse as a foreign player. I, I didn't feel difference between Brandon and Hugo or uh, even Edu, even Koro. No, it was uh, one more player. So we have now in the squad Indian players with a lot of experience, with a lot of, a lot of quality, and they need to make the difference also, not only expecting that foreign players make the difference. Just keeping in line with the same kind of theme, uh, Carlos, you are a young coach yourself. Uh, I think th this is your first uh, head coach uh, in that sense uh, role. You must have interacted over your time in India with some of the young Indian coaches who are also coming through the system. Uh, what do you make of, of the kind of coach education uh, programs that are happening in India and, and the kind of ideas that young Indian coaches are learning from uh, maybe even people like you who come into the system from outside with all of your experience and, and, and all of the, the stages that you've played at in Europe. Uh, so what is your assessment of, of young Indian coaches at the moment? And what do they need to kind of grow to the next level? Well, I think it's important. They take advantage of the experience of the foreign coaches that arrive to the league and it's important that the coaches that come from abroad like me or like the other coaches try to learn from them no? because 
they have been working here in India in different levels, but in the environment, we are going to work. So there are not only things to learn uh, from them to us, also in the, in the other way. There are things to learn in both sides. Both sides. Do you think Clifford, say, say a young example uh, would be someone like a Clifford Miranda. Um, mm. He's been a part of the setup. Um, now, Clifford, Clifford was a big player uh, when he was, you know, as a player in India. Um, as a coach, uh, what have your interactions been with Clifford uh, when you were there as a player? Well, Clifford was part of the technical staff during uh, my second season. Yeah, I, I can remember. He was working with Sergio Lovera. He was working after with Juan Fernando, with Derek Pereira. He was a very important part, no? you know? Uh, the difference where I feel, for example, uh, from a country of Spain is where I am living, you know, and in India is that in Spain you have many chances to, um, to continue your formation, to keep yes. on with your formation in terms of coaching, you know, uh, in, my, in my time when I was playing here, for example, I was training in the morning. And in the evening, I had the chance to go to some formations, to uh, study a lot of courses. You have many places very close to your house to, uh, to look training sessions, to interact with different coaches. So this is an important difference between Europe, for example, and, and India. It's a great advantage we have in Spain. Things are easier to, to learn, to have information. You know, but uh, I think, as I say to your May before, that we have many things to learn also from the Indian coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, could I could I just ask you what what kind of a coach like uh, uh, in terms of communication? Now, when when you talk coaching, um, you could know have tactical knowledge, you could have whatever. Communication is a very important part in coaching, huge, um, especially when you're coming to an India where probably. Um, their English might not be that good. And, you know, so you'll have to rely on other things and so on. Um, are you the type uh, who prepares the night before a team talk? Or uh, you just go with the emotion that you're feeling at the time and talk? And I, I, are you someone who says that I don't want to do long team talks? Uh, this is the amount I want to talk with. Uh, do you prepare these things? Uh, I'm just trying to understand how a coach prepares uh, for the day ahead. Of course, of course. Everything in coaching, we are talking about professional football. Everything must be prepared. Everything must be prepared. You know, you, you need to know how things you can say to one player, uh, which things you have to say to your team in that moment. As a professional coach, you need to prepare all these things. There are no space to the improvisation. You know, you have to prepare everything. Of course, sometimes you have to use your knowledge, the experience you have had to... To, to arrive to the motion, to the sound of the player, you know? Mm -hmm. But yes, in, in football, in professional football, you need to prepare very good everything. For you, for you, Carlos, someone who's uh, coming into his first season, you suppose your biggest challenge would be that your own players uh, develop that connection with you, the connection of the heart. And you need to get there quickly so that then those guys are your frontline warriors and they will do whatever mm -hmm. you ask them to do. Because it doesn't come so easy, right? It, it takes time. You have to work on it. Yeah, it takes time. For me, uh, the first thing to do is to create a new relationship with these players. I have played with them before, you know, because now there is no the same relation. Now I am the coach. They are the players. Okay, we were friends. We were mates. We had a, a relation of colleagues some time ago, but now it's different because... I will have to make decisions about them. So, first of all, uh, all of us need to understand these things and we will need to create this new relation. What I think is that I have an advantage because oh. I, I know them very good. I know, I know them. I know perfectly how to emotion them. I know how they feel. I know how they can perform. And I think it's a, it's a great advantage, but we will need to, to, to create this new relationship that I am working on it since now. <laughs> yeah. 
Say, since you have uh, Carlos an association already with FC Goa, in your opinion, who is your biggest uh, rival in the ISL? Which team is it that you're uh, going to go after the most in the league? The most what? Sorry. In in the ISL, in the Indian Super League, which team is it? Which other club or clubs uh, do you think are FC Goa's biggest sort of rivals in in this short history of the league? Uh, so, who are you going to go after the most in terms of the other clubs? Well, of course, uh, there is a a huge club in terms of financial that nobody can fight against them. Is ATK, you know, because they use their money many times to sign whoever they want. So it's it's a big rival. But as you know, guys, in football. Money is not everything. When yeah. uh, they are playing 11 players against other 11 players, it doesn't matter the salaries. It doesn't matter uh, some things like this. You know? so, but ATK, of course, will be a, a, a big rival for, for everyone. No? Mm-hmm. Um, and a part of them, I was very surprised with Hyderabad uh, last season. I think Manolo Marquez uh, made a, a great job. Uh, he created uh, a strong team. He created uh, a team that played really good uh, in his last two years. And well, uh, you know, of course, that any any team will be a, a a great opponent. But we will try to to fight with them, and we will try to be on the top. Carlos, because but sorry, I'm just butting in for the last one. Uh, you mentioned Manolo Marquez right now. And not just Manolo Marquez, you, uh, so many Spanish players, coaches, there's sort of a partnership that's developing over the last couple of years, more than that, in fact, where there's an influx of coaches, players coming into India. And it's, it's helping Indian football because, you know, it sort of suits us and our physical, uh, whatever attributes that we have as players, right? Um, what sort of is the attraction from a Spanish perspective? You, uh, because when the Spanish player comes in, um, beyond just the football, is it just the fact that you connect with Indians, um, you know, just the way we are, because the way you guys are back home with families, the way we guys are here, uh, does that help in the connect and sort of, you know, uh, gelling into the entire team environment? Yes, yes. I I have talked with many mates, with other coaches during this time that many Spanish players, many Spanish coaches love to work here in India, you know, and... Mm-hmm. Um, I think the most important thing is that, is that the you guys, the the Indian people, give us a lot of value, and you feel that when you are, I feel that when I was a player, that people love love here the 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 player respect us a lot, and this is a very important thing for us, no? Because as I said before, in Spain there is a huge pressure. Uh, you you play under pressure every day, every training session. After a lose, it's difficult to to make usual life here in Spain. That's it, and and the respect you give to the foreign players. I can talk about the Spanish player. It's it's very important for us. And uh, yeah, and the uh, the vision of the league that we have in Spain, the of the ISL, is 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 very good because the stadiums you can you can see the the level of the league, the the following that you you do in the media is is very nice for us and for this reason many players and many coaches want to 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 go to india to to play and to coach perfect uh, carlos thank you so much for your time um no pressure because we're expecting nothing but the title from you but no pressure uh, whatsoever um you're, you're 38 right now so you can withstand all of that easy it's pretty easy for you you got the energy but you can enjoy with pressure. You can enjoy also. You yeah, that's what people don't talk about. Pressure is enjoyable, right? Because once you start enjoying it, it's just addictive, right? Pressure. Yeah, yeah. The time I don't feel the pressure, I will be at home Chilling and by resting and bored. <laughs> so yeah. I love the pressure. No problem about this. Thank you so much, right. Carlos, for taking out your time, and we wish you all the very best uh, in your first season as head coach of FC Goa. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Bye. Carlos. Thank you.